Office President's Community and Welfare. Um, just to let everyone know that this session will be recorded and it's going to be posted on our YouTube. And if you're a candidate, please do ensure your cameras on and you mute your microphones if you're not speaking and you can turn them on when you're, when, when you're about to speak. Um, for students watching, we would like to ask you to please turn off your cameras and mute your microphones unless when you're going to step up and ask a question. And if you want to ask a question, just raise your hand and we will move over to you. Um, Joe, can I ask that please you help me look through the participants list and just notify me if any hands go up or something. Yeah, will do. Thank you. Um, then candidates, you should wait for till I call on you to speak and make sure not to go over the time limits. I think um, for your intro, it's three minutes you'll be given and then when you're asked the question you have like about three minutes or so to give an answer then candidates remember to be fair and positive there should be no negative um, campaigning or insulting the other candidate um, any questions the students ask should be fair and not offensive in any way. If they are, you reserve the right to not allow the candidates to answer them. So candidates should stick to time limits. And yeah, um, you'll be notified when you have like 30 seconds left. Any questions asked by the audience should be to all candidates, not individual ones. Thank you, and those are the rules. Um, now that that is satisfied, we have six candidates. Um, sorry, Joe, could you go back to the slide if possible? Slide one. Yeah, sorry, not to disrupt anything. Yeah, don't worry. I just wanted to read the candidates we have, the names. Um, so we have James Knight with us. We have Mamadou. We have Pauline. Um, um, Philip is not here with us. So we have um, Rene, Renia. Sorry if I pron pronounced your name wrongly. Can you tell me what the pronunciation is? Rania? Uh, so Rania is also unable to, to attend. Oh, okay. So we have James Knight, Mamadou, Pauline, and Pauline today. Okay, thank you. So you can, I don't need the slides now. Okay, so we'll start with like a brief introduction. Um, would invite the candidates up to just give a, a quick speech and you have three minutes to just try and say all you can. So um, I'll start with James Knight. Okay. Hi everyone, hope you're doing well this evening. Um, my name's James, I am a master's student in journalism. I've come back after doing an undergrad, as Joey knows well, he ran against me in his, I think, first successful year. Congrats again on that, and congrats on re-election. Um, I came back to UE, I really, I didn't have much intention of standing when I came back, but just due to the pandemic and due to situations around wellbeing services um, still being, and I think, not the, not addressing students' needs in the right areas, um, I felt it was, it was important for me to stand a platform that I had run on in previous years. Um, if you want to know any more about me, it's on the manifesto. You can read the stuff that I've done that I've done in the past at, at the university. 
In terms of the manifesto itself for this year, it's really about rent rebates for students, making sure that they're accurately give or making sure they're adequately given rent rebates by the university going forward. And the university commits to those through the remainder of the pandemic and through any kind of furthering that, that may happen there. Um, and also making sure that we hold private letting companies to account on those rent rebates as well. As an example, Unite Students being a publicly traded company that does a massive profit turnover, only giving students a 50% discount is really pretty unacceptable. Taking that up to the NUS and fighting to that on a national level should really be a priority of the union, in my view. Equally, mental health services, as Joey well knows, has been something that's been really, really key to my campaigns and key to what the work that I've done in the union for years now. Um, I'm incredibly passionate about it. It comes from a place of real personal significance. And there are still, like I said, massive, massive issues that I have personally with the wellbeing services that I think need to be rectified through an independent review and then through an over and then through an overhaul of the service itself as for other manifesto points i think sports and societies are areas that really need to be focused on as we come as we come out of the pandemic and we come out of the main brunt of lockdowns etc focusing on making sure that societies and sports teams have specific funds allocated to them we need accounts separate for each society and sports club to make sure that they can re-establish themselves at an adequate level, make sure they can run properly, sponsor themselves, get themselves publicity, get themselves back on the right foot when we come back out of this pandemic. We can't let the work that we've done over the last six to seven years plus at the union and the university to improve student experience go to the wayside because of this pandemic. I think the union's done a great job so far in dealing with the pandemic as they've gone, but we really need to keep the momentum rolling. And I think I'm the person that can achieve that next step for us. Voting opens next week. I won't take up my 30 seconds. Thank you very much. Thank you for that, James. Um, can everyone see me clearly? Yes, I can. Um, we'll move over to Mamadu. I pronounced it right. Yeah. Yeah, man, that's right. Um, hello, everyone. My name is Mamadou So. I'm a politics and IR student at UV here, level three. Um, so, yeah, uh, and currently a, I work as a BMU student advocate as well. So um, we've been trying really to raise a, you know, awareness in terms of the attainment gap that BMU students face, which, you know, is which I'm part of and, uh, you know, and also the struggle that international students face, you know, um, at UWE. So that's part of the um, things that we've been doing um, as BME student advocate. So regarding this uh, role um, for the VP community and welfare, I decided to really um, for this position because obviously um, there has been a lot of um, changes recently that affected, you know, not only, I mean, everyone, obviously, so I think that um, it is just an opportunity for me to really um, try to um, increase community integration, you will hear, uh, and make sure that, you know, student welfare is actually a top priority, a top priority for every student at UV. And, uh, um, the, and also um, another, um, another, challenge that I would like to um, face um, is uh, enhancing diversity because um, as a current BME student, as I mentioned, I'm aware how the attainment gap is really widening. So I think that, you know, those issues um, deserve to be addressed. That's why I decided to be here today. Thank you for that, Mama Um We'll go over to Pauline. Okay. Hello, everyone. My name is Pauline. Can you hear me? Can you all hear me? All right. Yeah, my name is Pauline. I'm on the postgraduate program in environmental health and um, in my second year, actually. And um, I mean, speaking from the place of experience and my participation with the uh, with the university community so far, I, I find myself, um, you know, very much interested in coming out for this role because 
I have actually been in the place of experience myself and haven't gotten feedback from a lot of students. I think that very key issues that the community and the welfare role or um, representative should be advocating for in the university, both for home and students abroad. And um, to begin with, I'm just looking at the very key point in my manifesto, which is about um, starting with the you as an individual, as a student, which I know that mental health issue has span over time in the, um, in the conversation of things during this pandemic. However, I am looking at it from the perspective that having been, a, um, having experienced what it is to actually have um, mental health issues and not being able to actually find the right support. I maybe to reconcile that with other many students during the pandemic and beyond. So it, this is about creating that mental health support for every student on campus and as well as moving on to their welfare. And in terms of their welfare, I'm basically focusing on what um, seem to be more of a problem during the pandemic and beyond as well, because I think this pandemic has actually revealed some salient um, cases of inequalities that is happening within the campus. And one of it is the national housing funding for private housing, for students in private housing sector, which I think um, is a big concern here on campus. And moving on with the fact that most international students as well, which comes to play in terms of their um, educational goals, most of them find some lacuna in meeting up. And that brings me to the point of the attainment gap. I'm also as I'm looking forward to seeing how students' educational goal can be achieved beyond um, making good grades, but actually, you know, having that um, giving, having an impact in their future career. And one of the key things I intend to do such that their welfare in the university and their mental well-being is reinstated in full force is to make sure that they have supporting affordable housing within the university and also creating a positive position for a VP for international students per se, because I feel um, they bear most of the brunt of what is happening currently on, in the university. And that's where the angle I'm coming from. And I hope that everybody gets to understand that we are in it together, irrespective of whatever role you think you're playing as an individual and um, as a community. Thank you very much. Thank you for that. Um, you agree that has been good. Good statement to start with. Um, the next thing, just so we go straight into it, um, we're meant to open the floor to students to ask questions if they do have any. And um, I might switch the order up when I'm calling on um, candidates to answer. So it might not be the same circle. So just to bear in mind. Um, Monique, thank you. Oh yeah, thank you very much for the opportunity. I'm just wondering um, from each of the candidates, what would you do to promote a sense of belonging or a feeling of community at the university in a time like the pandemic where there are no in-person sessions? Um, maybe to help new students get used to their surroundings, but also incorporate current students. Thank you. Thank you for that, Vinik. Um, that's that's a powerful one. We'll start with Mamadi. Okay, <laughs> he even raised his hand up. Okay. Yeah. Um. That's a really good question. Thanks for that. Um. Yeah. As I said, um, on my manifesto, I think um the uh, best way to really um improve well is to get in touch with those who are concerned right to really know what their concerns are and nowadays obviously with the current situation that we are in although we are not actually you know are able to meet people in person but there's a way to get in touch with them you know virtually and ask them really what their concerns are what changes you know they want to see so I think definitely um, we don't wish to stay in, you know, in this situation for for a long time. We hope that it's gonna end, it's gonna end soon, very soon. But definitely, I think um, these days all we can do is to try to really, you know, 
reach out people through whether social media or you know through emails if necessary as like personally I've been doing in my BAME you know a student advocate role so I think you know that's the way we can really make it work I don't know if that makes sense yeah um, that's fine just to confirm I'm not sideways say again I'm not sideways like no you are um, Jerry you're all lined up <laughs> Better. Oh, okay. so, yeah, that was my answer, actually. Yeah, yeah that's fine. Thank you for that, Mamadi. Apologies for this flipping screen thing. Um, we'll go over to Colin. You're you're on mute. Okay. Sorry, <laughs> I have to mute it at some point. Sorry about that. Okay, thank you very much, Vinit, for that question. I mean, this was actually a high point in one of the participation um, initiatives initiate that I've participated in as a current um, participation and equality officer for the Nigerian Student Society. You know, we've been able to actually create help cope. And I'm trying to bring this on board at the university community level where every student gets to really, you know, have these help cope videos going around on different social media for the students on campus. So that way, any um, new student who comes on, into campus wouldn't have more challenges. I mean, um, there's, there's, there are testaments to what the help cope videos have been able to achieve over time. And um, that alone is a project that also is in line with my, in my manifesto. And I do hope um, um students and just not just the this university society at large benefits from that thank you thank you for that pauline um james hi there Vinic. um pauline touched on it earlier um about particularly international students often interacting and getting in groups on campus to try and build a sense of community and that's that's a really key area that unfortunately we've lost because of the pandemic. We can't get together as, as students. Um, one of the societies that I've seen lead on this has actually been LGBTQ+. They've been fantastic on organizing virtual events. I think that's step one. While we're still in the brunt of the pandemic as virtual events, as Mamadou touched on earlier as well, Facebook, email, just trying to reach out to students where we possibly can. Moving on from that, we really need to make sure that we are funding our societies, funding sports clubs, funding NFI groups to make sure that they are viable to move through out of the pandemic when we can actually meet up in person again. Um, but as we're in the pandemic, it's really just about reaching out, doing online events, getting in touch with students where we can and making sure that we've got a robust safety net, which again comes into the wellbeing services that if students are starting to fall out of social circles, we have a net there to be able to catch them. That's that's really the key for me. Thank you for that, um, Vinit. Sorry, just leading on from that, I am wondering what each of you would do um, when it comes to getting in touch with um, students that don't engage. So your outlier communities, whether that's mature students or international students, how would you engage the students that don't participate themselves. Thank you for that. Um, Sorry. <laughs> would I start? Yeah. Um, Vani, could you mute your mic? Yeah. Thank you. Mamadou. Okay. Mamadou, you can go on a minute. Yes. Um. Thanks for that question, Vani. Vanik. Um, so, yeah, I think definitely what we should do, because obviously we have to, you know, be mindful that students are different, you know, um, there are some, they might be willing to really try to find out what are the opportunities, what are, you know, what is the support available, but others really, you know, they want we have will have to really let them know i think you know i think you know there should be some pl a platform a specific platform where we can actually 
you know, try to explain to, you know, everything that we are doing, like everything that the student union is doing. Like, I mean, obviously it, it, exi it does exist, but I think, you know, um, we can still improve it because for example, I'm not trying to really undermine anything here, but I, as an international student, I have friends that really, they don't know a lot about what's happening in the student union, what is the support available there. So, yeah, I think definitely that's something we, you know, we need to, to improve, to increase, you know, and try to make sure that everybody knows that the student union, for example, if you are a VP, you know, community leader, um, uh, community and welfare leader, that they really know exactly what support they can get from you. I think that would be very helpful. Thank you. Thank you for that, um, Pauline. Okay. Um, taking a lead from what Mahmoud has said already, um, we know that some students have different um, um, ways they approach things and then engaging might be too challenging for some why some are very all out there seeking out for information and um, you agree with me that the university uh, is also doing a lot of um, um, publicity about engaging via our um, um, emails via emails I mean that is one stop for every student to actually pick up whatever information the university has to disseminate and beyond that the social media handles so but in my own case my strategy is simple all I'm looking at is how cost reps will be made even I mean, we'll be given the beyond we'll be given the responsibility to actually communicate this at the grassroots level because I mean, like you said, some students don't interact. And from the place of experience, again, I have had students who have had depression and they are not communicating. And then just because I have to go all after looking at what is happening in different um, social media groups, I found out that some of the students, all they need is just a push and giving them the right information and they will come, you know, getting to um, this help they need, getting the support they need. So in my own um, simple way of engaging. So cost reps are a vital tool in this, uh, in achieving this goal. And that is why I will be advocating for most cost reps to be able to reach out to their various, um, to the various, to the different students in their classrooms. And that way we'll be able to actually reach out and be, you know, the engagement will be more um, valid and active, effective, so to say. Thank you. Thank you for that, um, James. Hey, um, just a tangent for a second, because I think I, I can provide kind of an anecdote here. In, in, in my first year, um, I didn't engage pretty much at all with the university, not really in classes, not really extracurricularly. I was severely depressed. I barely left my flat. Um, it was not an ideal time for me, but the last thing that I wanted to do was engage because I didn't want to engage with anybody outside of my four walls. Um, I don't know what amount of outreach would have helped me in that situation but what i know did help me was making sure that the safety net was there some students outreach isn't really enough it depends what you're reaching out to them for and it depends what interests are as well in my second year i got involved with the union through societies i joined debating society um i joined a few different ones and that was really where i kind of grounded my roots and got myself involved with the union and more with the university but it's about reaching out to students in a capacity that they feel comfortable with being reached out to in, whether that's societies, whether that's through their studies, whether that's through sports clubs, whether that's through NFI groups, um, et cetera. You need to reach out to students in the capacity that they feel comfortable reaching, being reached out to in. But at the same time, I'll echo what Mamadou and Pauline said, I think it's very important to have an active presence, email, social media, just to show people on a weekly basis exactly what you're doing as a union, just to make them understand the work that you're putting in behind the scenes to try and open up avenues for them um, and to try and engage them from the community perspective. Um, so yeah, for me, it's really, unfortunately, some students won't want to engage with the union and that's really, really sad. And I wish I could say that that wasn't the case as I'm running for VP Community Welfare, um, but those people we need to be there for and we need to make sure that they know that we're there for them 
while not being overly pushy, was trying to get them actively engaged in as much as we humanly can, if that makes sense. Um, that's my answer in a general con, in a general way. Thank you. That's fine. Thank you for that. Um, Pauline, do you have an addition? Um, yeah, just to reiterate, just to reiterate, you know, like I said earlier, when students who do not want to be um, seen or heard and they have um, depression or any f some form of mental health issues, it takes some form of strategies to get them out. And that is why also it would be so good that we as individuals and students also look out for each other. And that is what makes us a team, you know, in forging our head. Thank you. Okay, that's fine. When it's coming through the questions, okay, when it's going. Sorry, hi, thank you for humoring me in all of my questions. Um, I was just wondering, you all mentioned things in your manifesto, creating certain things that are already available at the university. So is it worth reinventing the wheel or is it just a case of better communicating these things to to the students and if it's just a case of better communication how would you address that communication thank you for that um i'll go in no particular order james um so vinik i don't know what you were meaning by re by kind of reinvent what's already available at university i'm going to go down the tangent for me of well-being services because i think that's the only thing in my manifesto apart from rent rebates which i've already talked about we need an extension of those at least through the end of the pandemic if not further um in terms of well-being services um it sounds a bit silly we kind of do need a bit of a reinvention of the wheel from from the experience that i've had and the conversations that i've had with with a significant amount of students we need an independent review into the service candidly and we need to be able to restructure the service to adequately serve the needs of students i've spoken to students who have been really put off by the fact that they're capped at six sessions and then referred on to the nhs and then put onto potentially year-long waiting lists to get further appointments from that you know that's not the fault of any of the counselors that's a fault of trying to mix two kinds of different mental health therapy methods and then coming up and kind of amalgamating that with your six session method it, it, it doesn't work as effectively as it needs to and i've heard some genuine horror stories i've heard people with significant mental health challenges who have been terrified to use more than one of their sessions because they're warned at the start you have six and then you're referred on and then they're terrified they're going to be waiting extensive amounts of times for an H for an nhs appointment which is only going to be exacerbated by the pandemic it, it, it kind of just rolls on and on and on um, I really do think we need to try and reinvent the wheel with well-being services, unfortunately. It's not an easy process and it never was going to be in any of the manifestos that I put forward for any of the campaigns that I've run. But I, I genuinely think it needs to be one of the top priorities for us. Um, I, I don't think it's something that can wait much longer, especially with expanding student capacity at the university. Thank you for that, James. Um, Colleen? Yeah, thank you very much, Fenik. Again, um, I'll not be inventing some of those um, points. It probably has been in our manifesto. Um, I sorry, think it, Colleen. Yeah. Um, for some reason, I don't think we can hear you properly as we used to. Okay, how about uh, now? Yeah, we can. Okay. Is it okay now to yeah. speak? Yeah, that, okay. yeah, that's much better. All right, thank you. Like I was saying, um, it's just not reinventing, about reinventing, it's also about sustainability. And the sustainability perspective of all these um, ideas, initiatives, and, and priorities of and goals that we have in place is such that, I mean, it still boils down to not just we seeing it from a management perspective, but also as a teamwork. You have a role as well, and then I have a role to play as well. And that is why, if you look at my manifesto, it's all gearing towards we having a teamwork in this whole journey to sustaining, having a sustainable intervention across board for all issues affecting students' welfare and um, the community at large. Thank you. Thank you, Pauline. Um, Mamadou. 
Well, I'm just going to say I'm not sure if um, it's going to be like reinventing the wheel or maybe making it a bit bigger then. <laughs> well, anyway, um, as I mentioned in my um, on my manifesto, for example, if you look at the um, case of uh, um, BME student in terms of where I said, um, you know, for example, the, the, it has come to light the you know, um, on, on some modules, um, international student or student from BME background have been relatively struggling when compared to home students. So, you know, and uh, there, there is a number of reasons behind that. And uh, for example, you, you have some international students who actually, um, like myself, that speak English as either second or third language, which is, uh, you know, something obviously you cannot blame a lecturer for that. But I think definitely there should be more, you know, the reason that BMU students are actually, are not doing well on those modules should be addressed. You know, I think, you know, we should investigate what is behind, you know, um, um, that what what can be done really to make it easier, for, you know, for 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 people who are struggling like that, not just specific group, but for everyone, you know. So, for example, I don't think that is like a reinventing something. I would say. Thank you. Um, thank you for that. Um, these have been solid. Um, so. It's my turn to ask some questions. Um, first things first, what what new priorities or campaigns would you introduce to the students' union? You you all heard that, right? Yes. Uh, yeah, I'll start with Corinne. Yeah. Okay. Um. Now, um, the new priority is simple. It's all about giving students the enabling, envir enabling environment that can help them achieve the academic goals, getting them the right, pro uh, the, the proper, the right mental health support, and then bringing on board their welfare through advocating for ad um, attainment gap issue. And one key thing, or rather two, that I will be advocating for as the new priority in my campaign is to ensure that, or rather lobby the university for the provision of grants for all students, both home and abroad. I mean, taking you back to my introduction now, that they all have um, provision for internet facilities, which is one of the inequality issues I've mentioned earlier. And that way, no students will be left behind in terms of achieving the academic goals. And then moving on to the second one is to ensure that all international students who come on board, I would lobby the university for the provision of um, an isolation accommodation such that you can actually be in the university environment for 10 days, after which once you're done isolating, you can then move on. And that way, most international students will not have struggles. And that is my own um, take. Um, and um, on this with my manifesto. Thank you. Thank you, um, James. Um, Pauline, I want to just applaud you. That was a really good point you made about the isolation accommodation. I hadn't even considered that. So that's yeah. Um, yeah, I, I think if if any of us want, I hope that would be something we continue and carry on because that's a really common sense thing. And I, I never thought of that um, in terms of priorities for my campaign. Again, I don't mean to rehash the mental health well-being services side of it, but it's been something again I've campaigned on for years. I think I've 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 waxed uh, I've waxed lyrical about it for quite long enough now. Um, in terms of some of the other side campaigns, um, I think the uni the union's done really really great work on men's mental health campaigns like Movember over the last few years. It's about it's about expanding that. It's about making sure that um, LGBTQ History Month is properly continued and funded and supported Black History Month um, and run by students from backgrounds that are represented by these bunts, by these um, by these celebrations in these these times. Um, that's that's kind of going to be my main, my main effort in terms of campaigns is just continuing on the great work the union's done with the campaigns so far, making sure that they're continued and they just really try and roll on and improve um, and they're led from the front. Um, yeah, in, in terms of my main, like I said, my, my main goals, if I were to win the role, 
well-being services, housing through the pandemic, making sure societies and uh, sports groups can get that going and are well-funded to be able to get that going properly when we can actually meet up in person again. Um, there you go. Thank you for that. Um, Mamadou? Yeah, um, to be honest, I think for me, that's not really a, a, a long story um, because obviously what we really need in order to improve anything is to get the right feedbacks, to really listen to students, to, you know, um, to actually um, understand what their concerns are, as I, say, as I said earlier, and make sure that is reported regularly to the student union. Right, executive team, executive team. Right, so I think that will be my main priority: making sure that regular feedbacks, you know, are actually um, are gathered, and uh, you know, make sure that is necessary changes are made. Definitely. Okay, thank you. Um, thank you for that, Vanik. Yes, I'm back, back, back again. Um. I'm just wondering the current initiatives that are available at the university. Um, the first thing that comes to my mind is student ideas. Um, how would you promote such a, an important and integral platform so that students can know it's there and make use of it? Sorry, thank you for that. Feel free to unmute to tell me if I'm muted. Um, we can start with James. Um, yeah, you make a good point to student ideas. Um, it's something that I feel has been kind of necessarily neglected through the pandemic. I think the unions had some real difficult decisions to make in terms of what they prioritise and what they don't over the last year, just based on how suddenly the pandemic has come upon us and how how varied it's been in terms of response. Um, in terms of student ideas, I think just really helping students understand what's achieved in the past. It's, it's done stuff like um, like make sure that we have not had just like dairy milk. We've had milk alternatives in the in the one zone areas. Um, we've been able to develop. We've been able to develop um, policies and policy areas the unions fought on for years. I can't think of any off the top of my, off the top of my head because. To your point, I can't remember the last time I visited the student ideas site. Um, so yeah, I mean, promotion is really an important thing. Making sure the student body is actively aware of it through email, through making sure that they're aware of the work that's done before and the work that they can possibly do to influence change in the union. Um, I think something that Mamadou touched on earlier and is a main part of your manifesto is around student feedback and around engaging with students to get their perspectives on the issues. Um, I propose putting together a uh, welfare and community committee, um, which was done a few years back to kind of a varying degree of success. That will be comprised mainly of academic society reps, NFI reps, sports society reps, and, um, and academic reps from the university um, to kind of inform and shape policy views within the community and welfare role on top of the ones that I'd be doing on, in, in mental health work and wellbeing and, and rent rebates particularly. But on top of that, we had a great president a few, well, quite a few years back, I think my first year, called um, called Ahmed. His work with actively going out and engaging the student base was, I think, second to none in terms of what I see, in terms of what I've seen from the union before. And admittedly, a lot of that was he was able to get out and go and see a lot of people. But that's the point. And I think that's what Mamadou kind of touches on in his manifesto really well, is that we should be able to go out if we are able to go and visit students, to go and get like very quick feedback from students on what their university experience is, how they're doing, what they think priorities should be, et cetera. I, that's a really important part of the role. So it's it's promoting student ideas, showing them what it's done in the past, engaging them through social media and engaging them in person, just to give them a forward facing sense of what the union provides to them. Thank you for that, James. Um, um, I'd have to say, because um, I was a student when Ahmed was in post, and that's actually one thing he, like, he was everywhere. <laughs> that's one thing. So um, we'll go to Mamadou. 
Yeah, I'm sorry, actually, I kind of missed the um, question a little bit because the internet was um, kind of freezing here. Oh, um, could, okay, can you... could Bunny please um, say that again? Yes, so um, I was asking how you would communicate and promote current platforms available at the university already. The example I used was Student Ideas, which is such a great platform, but it's not being utilized. So what would you do to um, tell students about the platform and how to use it? Well, that's a really good question. Um, I think um, the first thing that I will definitely do is, as I said earlier, laying out all the details that, you know, um, for example, if they, when it comes to my, for example, as a VP um, community and welfare, for instance, like making sure that um that is well explained to them you know the kind of support that they can actually get from you know um somebody who's actually you know um holding that position so it is uh obviously there is a a lot of um you know i think websites where like in you know um at uv where students can go can go and have a look so for example I don't think creating more or less a platform will will be you know that helpful. But I think definitely, uh, for example, uh, regarding the student union, you know, the best way to do is just to make sure that you know details are more added and more explained. Because you know otherwise, I think if you have a lot of platforms, that might also. Um, I, I think it is uh, quite difficult when people are not even engaging what exists and then you create more. I don't think that will, you know, result to what you're really looking for. So I think it's all about trying to really um, get their attention and make sure that, you know, making sure that they really know um, what they can get from us. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Mama and Pauline. Thank you again, um, Vanik. Um, this question is apt for the post-pandemic post strategy, if you ask me. And then, um, you know, now that the government is beginning to announce um, the lifting all the bans for staying at home and all that, you know, I think when students come on campus, come back to campus, since the old method or the current method, so to say, is not giving the maximum um, return and results, promoting it will still continue. However, I am going to be actually introducing or lobbying and um, uh, lobbying universities to adopt an initiative that students, you know, maybe for the fear of me sending an idea via an email and you get to see my ID on my social media handle and it feels like maybe I am not, you know, passing the right message. It's might actually be so helpful at this point to actually have some forms of um um you know an anonymous boxes around the university and maybe not just boxes but you know if i know my cost rep whom i've also suggested earlier that is a strategy to actually get people engaged and then you know bringing ideas to their doorstep as well to make it easy at a grassroots level the cost reps are might not actually also be in a better position sometimes for people to relate their ideas. They might feel my idea might sound um, like some form of rubbish, you know. So to make it un um, unanimous, it's usually best probably to have um, not just the buses, but individuals that might not be able to even meet again when you probably see them on campus. So my initiative will be tending towards that as well, to have um, boxes in strategic places where students can just drop their ideas so that they can actually, you know, appear um, anonymous. That's all I can say to your question. Thank you. Thank you for that. Can I go over to James? Then I'll come to you, Vanit. Okay. 
Hi, uh, yeah, sorry, me again. Um, just to kind of follow up on my point, I, I, I did just look at the student ideas page just because I haven't checked in self-admittedly a while. Um, and I did, I, I mean, I, I see that two of the top student ideas at the moment that are currently live are around making the SU presidents have more online sessions, be more active on social media, et cetera. Um, and and I, I completely agree that is that is something we need to be doing. Uh, we, we should be having at least weekly videos online at the bare minimum of what we're doing, how we are conducting ourselves, what we're doing in the office. Um, I think student council meetings, they used to be live streamed. Um, I, I think they need, to, they need to continue to be live streamed again, if possible. Um, we need to make sure that we open up representation, accessibility to the union as, to as many people as humanly possible. Um, so yeah, I mean, I, I think that kind of ties in hand in hand with student ideas, to be honest, is, is just increasing accessibility to the union. Thank you for that. Just to like comment on that. Um, yes, that's vital engagement, presence, and yes, the pandemic happened. So being that online presence was something that everyone started thinking, okay, what's this online piece like? But um, I think weekly, for like the past four or three weeks now, the presidents do post like a weekly update video on either Twitter or Facebook. So in case you do come across it. Vanique, um, can you go over to you? Yes, um, I have heard in all of your um, replies tonight that you constantly talk about using emails. However, um, having certain positions in the university, I know that emails do not have a very high open rate. Um, or some students open it and don't even look at what's going on. It's just to get the notification out of the out of their cell phone. So how if emails are not working, what is your backup strategy to get these things through to students? Because emails are not working as we hope they would. Thank you. Thank you, Vanique. Mamaji, you don't need to raise your hand because everyone will have the chance to answer. Uh, I'll start with Pauline. Okay. Thank you again, Monique, for that question. Like I said earlier, the backup strategy is simple. We get the, um, as you should be able to get the cost reps, being able to actually articulate all that students really have as an idea or whatever it is that is happening um, in the email department, the, 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 the people who we should be engaging more are the cost reps. So if the cost rep who serves as an intermediary most of the time, because in all honesty, um, as individuals and in the SU, you know, it might be so difficult to reach out to your your own cohorts. So to make things easy, it's better of that the cost reps are able to, I mean, we, we need to put more work on the cost reps, even if, if it means, you know, getting them to a level where they are so relevant, they make they are made to understand that their role is very relevant and key in achieving um, a sustainable educational transition for most students on campus before they you know leave campus leave university so i would actually still maintain that the cost reps are the best backup strategy in achieving whatever goal these emails are not able to um, achieve because they are the ones who have that direct contact mostly with their fellow fellow cost mates and um obviously societies also have to play a role you know, you know, ensuring that why students see these emails, if I have seen, I could actually still redistribute them on the society pages so that students who probably don't even give paid details, pay serious details to their emails would see it from the group chat. I guess for those students who have belong to different group chats, they get to see a lot of messages and for the leaders in those societies, they can also be, you know, adopted in the, in the, in the, um, in the, promotion of these messages that the universities put on our in different emails. So I'm looking at that as a backup strategy. It's continuous collaboration and, uh, you know, um, 
strong up communication with society heads and the cost reps. Thank you. Thank you for that. Um, James, over to you. Um, yeah, like um, um, Vinik, I, th I think um, addressing emails as, as kind of the primary source but by which we output our information to students, at least for me, um, it, it's not really the case. I don't think it should ever be the primary source of how we get our information to students. Um, because as you said, students just simply either don't open them or they'll, or they'll open them to get them out of their inbox. But emails are a tool that we can use and some students will open them. So if we have the option to use them, why on earth wouldn't we? Um, in terms of the primary sources of communication, it, it really needs to be social media for now. And then when we can get back onto campus and back actively engage with students, it's about going out and engaging with students, getting students involved in what the union are doing through conversation, through potentially, if we fingers crossed, get nightclubs and bars open in June, through some socially distanced safe club nights, hopefully from September, we'll see if the union can manage that based on government regulation. Um, it needs to be engaging students at a level that they're comfortable with engaging with. And it, it's different across all students. So we need to have as many prongs of engaging students as we possibly can. Like I said, for now, the main one is social media. Going forward, I think the main one is in person. I think Pauline makes a very good point about course reps. Um, but I think there needs to be so many different avenues. We just need to need to look at engaging students as, in as many ways as humanly possible to try and get as much hit rate to try and get as much hit rate as we can. Thank you for that, James. Um, I go over to Mamadou now. Yeah, um, thanks for that question, Vanik. Um, so I definitely agree that, you know, um, student, we are because, you know, I'm a student, we, you know, um, apart from the urgent emails that come from you, we um, really, you know, it's not likely that student going to check check the emails, you know, just to reply or even read through something that comes from the SU. I mean, some might do, but, you know, most students might not. So, yeah, but how, you know, however, I really don't think um, trying to put, um, you know, um, a lot of work on the student reps will help because, you know, those are just voluntary positions you know um even sometimes from my experience you know some modi some lecturers struggle really to have someone to really be a rep nowadays you know for some modules however so i think that the best option would be to get in touch with the um uh, module not module leaders like each department like has a leader right so i think um definitely that would be the best idea to do right to really get in touch with the leaders of each department program leaders exact that, that's the word i was looking for so you know to send them leaflets and also you know send them the some the information that we need you know because for them if something comes from one of them you know an email from one of them student you know is likely to read it than if it comes from just a student, you know, or maybe, you know, the SU. So, yeah, again, just to reiterate, I think um, the backup, the best backup solution would be to, you know, um, put the responsibility out or just ask the, you know, um, module leaders um, to really, you know, send those informations out to students. I think that will help. Thank you. Thank you for that, Vinik. Um, because of time, I, I would have to. Because Adeyemi popped in. Adeyemi, do you have any question? Adeyemi. Hi, everyone. Hello. Okay. Yeah. Sorry, I have a question. Yeah, um, looking at the position, looking at the Office of the Community and Welfare, um, I think this office is very important to international students when they come in. So uh, I want to ask all the people that are contesting that what do they think that they are going to do differently from what has been done? And why? Thank you. Thank you for that, Adeyemi. 
Um, just because of we're conscious of time, candidates, we're going to go a bit over time. If you're fine with that, if you need to leave early, just notify me, and you'll be given a chance to give a closing statement. And then you can leave. Yeah. Are we okay? Um. So yeah. Um. We have the question from Adeyemi. Um. James. Yeah, sure. Thank you for the question. Um, in terms of engagement with with international students, um, it's 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 very much an individual kind of case in terms of um, international students versus home students, as Pauline I think has touched upon. Um, international students can find themselves more isolated at university. Uh, I remember it was touched upon this as well. It's an experience I've not had. I'm I'm a home student. I have always been a home student that won't change and like i said before it's about leading policy from the front i i won't be the person that is actively coming up with the policy from this i will i will engage with a welfare and community committee to make sure that we have international student representation that are actively talking about the issues that international students face so that we can have a forward-facing policy on it I can't speak to it again, and I'm not going to pretend like I can and like I have all of the answers. But I think there are some fantastic ideas that have been come up with by the international by the international student community. And if I can amplify those voices and create the um, and, I, and give them funding for different uh, systems, for different societies, for different groups, for whatever, to be able to empower them and to be able to give them communities and, and safe spaces within the university. I will do that 10 times out of 10. Lead from experience of international students. That's that's my policy on it. Yeah, thank you for that, James. Um, we'll go to Mamadou. All right. Um, yeah, I think actually this is something that we've been mentioning since um, this chat started. But anyway, um, as I said, um, I think really to you know, briefly talk about that is definitely, um, I am a, an international student myself. So, you know, I know how, how challenging it is really, you know, when you are in a completely foreign place with a foreign, I mean, you know, anyway, when, when you are somewhere that is not home, you know, things are different. So, yeah, um, this is why um, I talked about that. It, um, on the manifesto, like, you know, the best thing to do, you know, when it, especially when it comes to welfare, is definitely to get in touch, you know, um, with um, the students and, uh, you know, listening to their concerns because, you know, you cannot really solve any, someone's a problem if you don't know, you know, what, what it is. So we definitely need to know that first, you know, what they really need, you know, and then we can actually um, do that accordingly. Thank you for that. Um, we'll go to Pauline. Thank you, Adeyemi, for that question. Um, as earlier said, like um, I've said that um, the international students bear the brunt of um, um, the issues concerning welfare on campus. I mean, from my own experience and from feedback from a whole lot of international students. So, um, what I would do differently this time, coming in as if I am voted in, obviously, is um, making sure that there's a permanent seat for international students in the SU race. I mean, it has to be a welfare or um, community and welfare rule where every year it has to be a permanent seat. Other rules can then be varied among other students. So, I mean, it's my you know, in my own opinion, I feel it will do justice to the needs of most international students. And that is my own strategy. And that's what I'm also hoping to bring on board. Thank you. Thank you for that, everyone. Um, now, there's just this last question, and then that's it. Um, knowing that we have a diverse student body, um, what initiatives do you have to champion inclusion and equality across campuses? Um, 
ਮੰਮਾ ਜੀ ਸੋ ਆਈ ਕਾਈਂਡ ਆ ਲੋਸਟ ਯੂ ਬੀ ਵਾਟ ਵਾਸ ਦਾ ਕੁਡ ਯੂ ਸੇ ਦਾ ਅਗੇਨ so acknowledging that we have a very diverse student body what initiatives or initiatives that are already existing that you think you have to champion inclusion and equality across campuses well um yeah as i said um i think first of all clo trying to really bring more awareness in you know in terms of the attainment gap and the you know the struggle the um the particular struggle especially the um, bme student face for example you know in in the department of h and ss you know um there's a number of model where you know in recent years um student from bme background has been struggling on a lot you know compared to home students because that's the data as a bme student advocate i have the data so i could have you know brought it here or i forgot maybe it's not even needed anyway so but yeah um i i've seen that from that data so definitely i think that will be the fair you know the first step towards you know um achieving equality because if like you know we have to look at where others are struggling while other you know while the rest are not you know so i think if we address things like that i think definitely that makes any part because we cannot just guess and say oh this is what we're going to do we have to try to you know look at the data you know what what is happening you know where students are struggling you know and why and then try to address it away i don't know if that makes sense thank you thank you for that um i'm going over to colin okay yeah thank you for that question i mean it's very apt at this time you know and um i would want to respond by saying that um um from what muhammad has actually mentioned it's about a data driven intervention we all know if we get the right data we sh- will be able to give the right interventions to whatever the l- gaps are in the i mean we know that there are existing data and there there is need to keep improving this data and why this data is be- data data is being improved it will be able to give an informed decision in giving the right intervention and that is just the simple way to go about equality and diversity thank you Thank you for that, James. Um, yeah, look, I don't have much to add on top of Pauline and what's already been said. Like I said on the last question with with international students versus home students, I've not had that experience. That's that's not something I have ever had to had to experience. Um, it's a case of leading by the data, leading by the evidence, as you both stated, um, making sure that we listen to student voices, making sure that we listen to community voices, um, keep any efforts that we've had going before continue those rolling make sure that we empower people to be able to have more opportunities to be able to create more events more um more celebrations as we go through the university um system um in terms of other stuff that we can do i, I again i think mental well-being and well-being services is is key across across a real a real litany of issues throughout the university including um bme bme issues um there is national statistics that bme people feel consistently less able to speak to somebody about mental ill health and that is completely unacceptable it's also the situation at our university completely unacceptable we need to make sure that our service works for everybody it doesn't just work for home students who candidly probably look like me we need to make sure it works for everybody it possibly can and works to the best possible level which is why i really want an independent review into it and a complete restructure and overhaul reinvent the wheel that's all i have to say lead by experience not by some random person's policy and thank you for that everyone um i know mama mama do needs to leave soon so he would give his closing statement at the end sorry because of time if you have any other question you can you can answer after they've 
given their closing statements if the candidate wants want to stay. Um, just before Mamadou gives his closing statements, just so we're clear, like inclusion, inclus inclusivity, equality, it, there are other groups within our diverse student body, you know, the disabled students, and um, they're just different groups. So it's not just really about international home. Okay. Um, Mamadou, Pauline, sorry, if you have an add-on or question, you would probably have to say after. Um, Mamadou, can you give a closing statement now? Yes. Sorry, what was that? No, I was saying, can you give your closing statement now? Oh, okay. Um, yeah, it's been uh, amazing, really, to you know um, be here tonight with you, and uh, you know there's been a wonderful discussion and uh, one you know good questions from especially Vanik. Thank you for that. Um, so yeah, um, definitely. Um, you know, we uh, personally, I'm running here really to. Um, bring, um, you know, a better welfare for every, you know, UV student, regardless of background or identity. You know, I would like to see students, you know, really together as one, you know, very united because, you know, I've seen students who've been struggling um, a lot in over the last two years that I've been at UV and, uh, you know, um, and I, I've also personally, I struggled a bit. So, you know, from all the experience, I would like to really um, be a part of the a, a, a change, you know, where students won't have really to to suffer, you know, um, in silence, you know, definitely. So, yeah, um, thank you very much, everyone. And uh, yeah, good luck to all of us. Thank you. Thank you for that, Mamadou. So I hope you have the rest, like a good rest of the day. And thank you. Thank you, you thank do. You for it, mm -hmm. so. I just have to drive home. I'm not at home right now, and where I park, like you know, I cannot stay longer. So okay, that's fine. Um, James, is it okay if we listen to what Pauline has to say before? Okay, Pauline. You're on mute. I would just like to say that um, I would like to take my leave now because I have um, someone coming in to take over right now. So um, it's not really a question, it's just to allow to that I will, I'm really will have to leave. Oh, apologies for that. Okay, can you give your closing statement before you leave? Yeah, that's fine. Um, okay. My closing statement is to let all student communities in our UE, you know, to understand the fact that the role of the VP education lies within the team spirit that we possess. And if we believe in that, um, through my own strategies, I believe that together we can achieve a success story that would enable every student reach out to the possible academic um, goal they have, and as well as ensuring that their mental well-being and um, their welfare is uh, achieved in the course of this, in the course of everybody's academic journey in UAE. Thank you. Thank you. Sorry, you, you mentioned VP education. I'm just sorry. Are you... Oh, sorry. <laughs> I mean, VP community and welfare. You... Okay. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> thank, uh, thank you, you for that observation. Okay. Um, Ademi, apologies. I don't think we'll be able to answer um, ask your question as the candidates have to leave. Um, so we'll go over to, to James for his closing statement. Yeah, thank you. Um, it suddenly seems very quiet in here. Um, I was going to remark how how wonderful the session's been, but everybody's everybody's left. But it's been it's been genuinely really really nice to have such an active, engaged discussion around this. Uh, it's the first time I've I've been in one of these debates for community and welfare. Um, so no, I really appreciate the students' union for setting it up and for everybody to uh, to be here this evening. Um, 
closing statements, really why I think you should vote for me. I've got experience with the union. I've got experience with the university. I've been campaigning on these issues for years. I still don't think the issues have been solved, um, although the, the, there's there's been an effort to try and fix them. I think there are still systemic issues with particularly well-being and welfare within the university. Um, I think that a full restructure and a full review is necessary to be able to challenge those same issues. Um, and I, I genuinely think that I am the person to be able to do that. On top of that, I still want to look at issues to do with the pandemic. I want to look at issues to do with societies and sports teams coming back. I want to build a welfare and community and community committee to make sure that we have an active functioning student voice with embedded within the role in future generations of people who take over. Um, and I just really want to do the job, frankly. It's been something I've wanted to do for, for a number of years now. And I, if you vote for me, I'd greatly appreciate it. I know I'm probably not going to say this in debate. If you vote for anybody else on the ticket, then I completely understand. There's some really, really great candidates running. So thank you very much for hosting. Really appreciate it. So, thank you for your time, James. Thank you for that. Um, just to say, Ademi and Vanik, if you had any more questions, I'm sure they probably would be happy to answer if you DM them on their socials. Because I believe since everything is online, I've seen a number of like Instagram pages, you know. So thank you with with that. I know we went a bit over time, but I'm happy to say this session um, has come to a close. It's it's been really lovely having, in fact, my head is quite hot <laughs> listening to everything you guys are saying. The questions. Thank you, Vinny, for being on top of it, and I DM you to join. Thank you for the dedication as on call, and Will and Joe for helping facilitate this. So, without further ado, I'll say oh. I forgot to say good luck when the other candidates were here. But good luck to you, James, and good luck to the other candidates. And yes.